In Stanley Kubrick's 1999 movie, Eyes Wide Shut, there is a clandestine society depicted as powerful and vengeful, who the main character, Bill, gets the unfortunate opportunity to discover exists when he goes to one of their parties without actually being a part of their society. They stalk Bill to the point of forced silence, threatening his family, and there is never any real closure at the end of the film um, because he has too much to lose to even try and figure out what is going on. What I, the film gets at, I believe, is not only does the main character, a morally questionable and irresponsible guy who, prop, who properly represents a culture of moral and spiritual malaise and material obsession, has absolutely no place to be criticizing some sick, bizarro cult that just happens uh, to be made up of powerful guys who just want to LARP as a clandestine ivory tower uh, weirdo cult. He is just as irresponsible. You know, he um, he cheats on his wife. Um, and while he doesn't have sex with any other women in the film, if I recall correctly, he definitely flirts with them. Um and he does some very morally questionable things in the film. Um, and even though he pushes away certain temptations, it's pretty clear that he is a naive guy um, who is, you know, living in the spirit of lust and um, not very much in control of himself. So why would he go out to criticize some sick freak weirdos who um, might have some uh little um dark economy that they operate in he's very much a tamer version of this american trope obsessed with naively serving every desire they have because they can does the average modern american really have any place degrading the out of touch elites and so that's that. The film ends in the same way the average American's life goes. A stalemate between the powers that be, who really have no more rhetorical power, and the average American, who isn't much of a moral or decent person um, than those in charge. If you have ever met someone like this, who has riches and powerful influence, they really are not well-rounded, worldly or wise people. Um, if you've ever had the the misfortune to meet someone who is a millionaire or a billionaire, um, who really garnered their riches from, you know, I mean, wh wh whether it may be from something um, where they worked their ass off to get to where they are, or maybe they inherited it, whatever. You know, it's not, these people are not um, forces of nature that are, you know, any smarter than the typical person. They probably just have um, a much higher tolerance for, you know, taking shit and working hard. And what a lot of people in the NRX community and, and people who are very kind of well aware of the, of, of the powers that be and their sort of rhetorical tools is that these people are not competent and they are probably not going to have any real lasting effect on the world around them because they are susceptible to the same um, market uh, uh, forces that we are, right? If there is a giant dollar crisis dollar funding crisis where um, a bunch of countries need dollars because the economy is slowing down. How do these people make, make that into something that serves them? If the economy is slowing down and we are going through this very, very obvious deglobalization process, how are these so-called powerful elites actually going to change things, especially in time, right? in a timely manner, because they normally work on kind of a longer time horizon. How are they going to actually change anything? Let me, I mean, let me ask you, the NGOs like the World Economic Forum, um, you know, the World Health Organization, just like John Michael Greer puts it, 
these people are all out of touch. Do they really have any power? Do they get to set some edict that every other country on the planet um, without question follows? I don't think so. I think these people, they hop in their planes, they hop in their private jets, they fly over to their Davos or their Bilderberg meetings. Um, they blabber about how rich they are and the golf resort that they just built. And then they go about their merry way. These people do not have any clue of what it's like to go to a grocery store. They do not know what it's like to ride a train or a public bus. They do not know what it's like um, to have to work a, a extremely degrading job where you are given shit and forced to eat it and like it. These people um, literally li have lived their entire lives in pretty much a complete detachment from the real world. So now let me ask you, let me ask you, do these people, do you think that they know what is going on? Do you think that they know what the euro dollar market really even is? Do they know what quantitative easing really is? Do you think that they understand all of these inert, I've explained them very blatantly in a lot of videos and, and articles, that the... Um, the the tools that you know the federal reserve or the ecb or the boj tried to use to induce inflation didn't work and they're not going to and they're not going to hyperinflate the currency their currency because they know how doomed they will be if they do that they're not going to take the 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 tools of venezuela and zimbabwe you know and and model their economic um their economic models off of these uh, failed states. What they will do, though, is talk about how they are going to be 100% emission-free by 2030. They're going to talk about how they will ban internal combustion engines by 2050 or whatever. Right? And sure, even the companies that I hey, just a reminder, are very much invested in by European nations, governments, um, and by China, like Volvo and Volkswagen. These are basically state, these are state corporations. This is state capitalism. This is socialism. These are not representatives of the technological grand future. Um and and to to even maybe even use them as an example, I think would just be intellectually dishonest. Because when 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 how 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 are they supposed to know what the future looks like, right? They're supposed to operate on the future will always be good for Volkswagen or Volvo, you know, um, or even America, right? Any company has to operate in that in that um, mindset. So why do you think? that these out of touch elites who got a silver the minute they were born they had a silver spoon in their mouth they got to go to the greatest uh grade schools the greatest high schools the greatest universities never worked a job in their life the extent of their work has been investing in commodity futures and setting up ngos where they invite world leaders to so that they can um walk around in their little pageant of third-way centrism. Tell me how these people, tell me how, how they control the world. Because I got news for you. They don't. You know who controls the world? At this point, it's Jamie Dimon, right? Um, and I'm just using, you know, that's just a, that's the convenient guy to use. It's the finance world. It's the people who are CEOs of banks, um, who are uh, the the high IQ uh, bond uh, traders at, at big banks. The people who know how the system actually functions. Those people, they are not saying we're going to have this brave new world, this borderless future. 
this world where there is no currency, you don't have property, and you're happy. No, no, no. The World Economic Forum's brave new world will never come. It won't even get off the ground. Because not only is it easy to just do a little research um, and look up how uh, absolutely impossible it is, not only infrastructurally, but logistically, to have electric cars everywhere, which, let's be honest, is just the modern the modern equivalent of the Jetsons in the 1950s flying around in, in goofy little capsules. We do not have the logistical or infrastructural um, ability to, to, to own this future, and yet these people in power, they, uh, they just are, they, they are so they are so drowned by their echo chamber, the echoes within their echo chamber. That they, they, they can't even understand. They can't go walk around New York City or Chicago or Houston and see that, hey, this is a crumbling society. They don't get to see that. They go walk around Zurich and go up in their little mountains and camp and, and drive around in their Teslas and, 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 and probably not even that. They probably drive around in supercars. And uh, Rolls Royces, and and that's that. The people who really get to see how the system has slowed down, how we will never be able to have growth in the in the global economy ever again, not only just because of the supply chain, but the fact that big banks are not risk on. No one is interested in invest in investing in um, this Star Trek future because it's unfeasible and all you have to do is just go look at gdp gdp charts go look at inflation of every modern economy on the planet go look at money velocity go look at now the savings rate of the u.s being pretty a way a good, good bit higher than it was before 2008 um go look at how little lending there is the system is slowing down it's because that there, there is a natural uh, procl proclivity for societies that have had this hyper-productive era to slow down. And it shows in every facet of not only our economy, but our population, how, how irreligious people are, um, how high suicide and uh, obesity rates are, right? This is a reflection of of a society that is facing an existential crisis where we are not going to have the boomer Star Trek future. Now that you understand that, um, you need to start looking at the powers that be as the out of touch, delusional um, fools that they are. Um, I've made the argument that they aren't even, you know, they're the, the U.S. government, the European Union. They're not the sovereigns of who they claim to be sovereign over. Um, because they're simple, um, they're, they're simply reflections of the same delusions of the, um, of, of the high-chaired tyrant, uh, you know, NGO-headed, um, academics like Klaus Schwab, you know, these are people who think that they have power. They think that they can control you. They think that they control the narrative, but I mean, all you have to do is go on YouTube or Twitter and look at posts made by Biden or posts made by these third ways, radical centrist, um, technocrats. And you'll start to see that all of their all of their really creepy cryptic um, propaganda it it's so not only is it goofy I mean Biden's Twitter which he definitely does not type on uh, he's not the one tweeting it's literally nothing but the build back better thing again and again and again and again you know blabbering about how there is poor people therefore build back better 
they obviously live in this world where they think that they're going to like i don't know i think their idea is that they're going to invest somehow in a bunch of solar and wind energy and then have one world government and no border you know just this really re they, as john michael greer put it is the best that they can do is just mimic the soviet union word for word wow then i mean if you really think that they're going to achieve that and that they actually have the political and social capital and cultural capital to achieve that then i i'm sorry to be you i would really be sorry to be you because that is the most goofy black pill to ever consume to think that these people who probably have worn diapers their entire lives um who don't know what a raccoon or a possum look like i've literally met people who don't know the difference between you don't know what a raccoon is i'm not kidding you um these are not people um these are not people who who live in reality they larp have you ever met someone who goes to uh the renaissance festival and they pretend to be a knight well these people are doing the same but as technocrats they can't help that the fact that the the world's economy is slowing down and you know i i've told you it all it's all sourced in the fact that collateral is bs at this point the collateral that the system runs on which you should go watch my video on the repo market it's it's the the entire system for collateral is dead and that's what this financial system needs for it to survive and so they're 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 heavily invested in pristine collateral what's seen as pristine collateral which is u.s treasuries when they used to have a much more risk on risky system where you know there was a lot of money floating around ready to invest that's not how it is anymore and it won't be like that ever again and and i mean our i've i've written about it too um in my uh my uh, financial critical mass article i've written about how um there's inherent deflationary pressures in a society that has not that that has built itself upon the myth of progress the myth of hyper materialism because once you create technology that's solely made to uh keep man in the pleasure dome and keep you on your couch watching tv eating pork cracklings you're not going to be interested in producing technology has literally made everything so efficient that people have become dumber and fatter and lazier and uh yeah and the elitists are just as bad so i want you to look at the world for what it is we are going through a time of technological decay infrastructural decay this is not a world where a guy like klaus schwab who's 83 by the way so who's going to be his successor i mean dr evil I, I don't know how much uh funnier you can get than a literal um james bond villain looking fella Wh who are you going to get who's going to come around and say yes everyone on the planet you will now obey our the davos uh councils every single edict fat chance that'll happen these people believe it or not are simply coping with the fact that they will not have the riches and control that they thought they would have through the un or the eu or through their countless ridiculous trade agreements the blairite world of the blairite point of view of these of these um of these third way bill clinton george bush types um they're not th that that world is not it didn't work out the global economy's dead it's gone it's dying it's going away we're heading towards a slower world and that's a good thing that's a good thing for spirituality that's a good thing for community maybe we can use technology to better our world spiritually rather than um making it easier for us to 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 sit on the couch and watch tv maybe that's the we, we we can live in a better world and guess what these these people who think that they actually have rhetorical control over the masses um i'm sorry but go on any social media and just look at the countless amount of info that you can find anecdotal and pretty um pretty pretty uh proven 
science that th all of this, all of this mandate bullshit is, um, is, uh, it's, it's, it's very much questioned by the typical person and the typical person does not want to get their, um, their coof medicine. They don't want to get more and more half a year. People are over this shit. No one's convinced by this except your, your wine aunt and, uh, you know, the, the, the boomer who sits around watching CNN all day. I'm sorry, but we're not going to have this crazy revolution, okay? We're not going to have this crazy future where we're fighting the evil elites. Sorry, the evil elites are not that competent. So I want you to realize that the, the rhetoric that they spew, it's, it's ratioed out the ass on YouTube and Twitter. And maybe they'll try and use the last bits of power they have, like with the military and police. I wouldn't be surprised if they tried to get that, uh, if they were that desperate. But I, I just want you to understand, these people are nothing to fear. They don't have control over anyone. It's not like FDR or something where it, it, it was truly not a great guy. And he really did have rhetorical power over the people. And maybe he, I, he probably did a better job than most people would. But... We don't live in that world. We live in a world where people have their own null hypothesis, right? We live in our own little decentralized internet communities where we have our own ideas floating around. We rule our own people. We have our own scholars and priests and plutocrats and aristocrats. The, 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 the aristocracy that you see in the U.S. government or the military, which is a joke at this point, or, or, or Bezos, these people are not competent and they don't, and they don't, they don't represent the views of anybody except their own little, uh, their own little, their own little clandestine group. So I want you to realize that this future is not going to happen. The brave new world is not coming. Okay. It, they've been, they've attempted it in Australia and they're failing. They've attempted it in Europe and they're failing. Okay. If they try to bring it to America, they're going to get their asses kicked, right? And it's already blowing back in their face. I might have good old Mikey on again to talk about the fact that the mandates where they're firing, you know, medical professionals is already blowing back in the face of the New York government. These edicts that they truly do implement through fiat, which is tyrannical, when the government is doing it against its own citizens, right? A king can issue edict through fiat, but it mu he, if, if he's doing it uh, in in uh, in some representative way that benefits the the whole of his citizenry, then he is he is doing a, you know uh, what could at least be seen as a, benev a benevolent act. These people are not; they're quite clearly trying to oppress groups of people. Do you think this will work? Do you think that people who don't even have any re like any kind of leg to stand on, like they're not even working class hero types, right? They're not like some Robespierre, at least, who comes around and is like, I'm for the working man and, and peasants join me. No, no, they're not like that. I, I, <laughs> I think what y'all need to start realizing is that the future is not going to look glum and sad. It's going to be full of infrastructural decay, yes. It's going to be full of, you know, low birth rates and probably a de very decentralized government and, and a slowing down of things. But isn't that a good thing? Isn't that a good thing, finally, to have that where we stop living in this hedonistic, uh, just fast, live fast, die young world? I think it is. And I think you should be prepared for it. I think you should be happy about it. Because these people... And I, and I will, I, I, even, even if I'm one of, <laughs> even if they want to arrest me for um, questioning their authority, I want you to realize that they don't have power. They won't win. And it, I, I, I had almost bet this whole new scary world, it's not going to even get off the ground. Right. Um, the, the rocket isn't even, it won't even lift off and crash. It's, it's, it's really not even there. There's not even a rocket. Um, 
in a way, this is a great uh, this is a great cave uh, allegory of the cave deal, where it's like they, they the shadows on the wall, where you think, oh, what what is Klaus Schwab saying next? Because I like saw this thing on Twitter about how th this guy was breaking down, like, oh, the, the two guys from the World Economic Forum have said that there will be a big event next. What the fuck are you talking about? Okay, so two guys, Klaus Schwab and some other dunce, were at their little get-together, and they were saying, there will be another big event. And everyone in the audience who's this out-of-touch billionaire who uh, wants to live in their own little world where they're fighting climate change. Those people, and yes, I guarantee you, they really think that that exists. They really think that they're going to fight climate change and they're going to live, they're going to be a technocrat in this beautiful new world. Those people, um, they, they, uh, that, that's who, who's that for? That, this is not some, it's not like they go to this group with this information nobody knows about. No, no. I'm sorry. What are you? What are you smoking? What are you smoking? Where you think that they, they know something we don't? No, they're LARPing. They're LARPing. It's like going to uh, some Renaissance festival, and a witch comes around and pretends she has magic. Oh yes, I have magic. I'm gonna cast a spell on you. That's what it is. It's LARPing. Um. And, you know, and you can go and read that great, wonderful, beautiful little story from that um, Ida something. She was a, uh, or is or was, I forget. This was last year, mid, early last year, maybe in 2019. And it was, a, uh, or no, 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 it was, uh, it was late 2020. And this is the, actually, yeah, go read um, John Michael Greer's Great Leap Backward. Because in that article, he talks about Ida, this Danish politician who wrote her little her little basically Soviet fanfic that everybody references. You won't have any property and you'll be happy and and she lives in basically a pod and eats bugs and etc. She lives in that little scary fantasy world that so many of you are so afraid of. And I want you to understand that was an out of touch dumb little girl who uh <laughs> who wrote a little Soviet fanfic and lives in her little world where she's fighting evil, scary climate change. A.K.A. a midwit. A.K.A. someone you should not be afraid of. Someone who has no rhetorical power whatsoever and will be forgotten to history, if not uh, for people in the future to be laughing at her ridiculous little story. Anyway, I hope I got my point across. And I hope that you stop being blackpilled. Because the, the, these NGOs, they, they're, they're, they might do some spooky things here and there, and you might be able to come and say, well, they're going to do this thing. They're going to they're gonna do 666 uh, and brand you and blah, blah, blah. I, uh, okay. I mean, you've watched too many dystopian films. They're good to watch, right? It's good to get ahead and know about all this, but it's LARP. It's, it's out of touch, elitist LARP. And the elitists no longer have control over the narrative. And governments no longer have sovereign control over their own people. Why? Go look at how Minneapolis was completely trashed by BLM. Go look at how in San Francisco there are people who literally rob stores because it's legal for them to do so. Go to L.A. or Austin where you see heroin addicts on the, side of the, on the sidewalk living in tent cities. This is not a country... Um, where a government rules, where there is civil, where there is a civil society, where there is rule of law. Go look at how <laughs> there are certain people, conservatives, who it's a lot easier for them to go to prison for things that they do that the state doesn't like than there is for the periphery groups like BLM uh, for all of the crazy things that they, they do where they get bailed out by literally George Soros. Go look at how um, there are cultural enclaves quite literally all across the U.S. who have no... They, you ask them who John Quincy Adams is, and they won't even know. You ask them pr even who Abraham Lincoln was, they probably won't even know. G they probably don't even speak English. Do you think these people are ruled by the U.S. government? Do you think that they see any legitimacy in it past getting their own gibs? 
I question you. Go, um, go read my article, Iron Law of Culture. They don't. The U.S. government has no control over anyone past the Gibbs. And I'm sorry, but um, the Gibbs are not enough to control the rhetoric and the culture of so many enclaves and so many people. This nation is splintered. It's not really even a nation anymore. And all you need is Thomas Hobbes' great definition for what a sovereign is, is a sovereign is someone who is able to rule an entire people and treat them as an equal population and not give favor over any other. Once a sovereign starts doing that, they are no longer sovereign because they are instituting a state of war against the people that they are oppressing. Therefore, they are recognizing that there is a separate nation within their own nation. And ultimately, they're recognizing that they're oppressing people, which is not what a sovereign ever does, which is not what anyone should ever do. Anyway, thank you. God bless.